Okay, well, been working on one of my bucket list things, semaphores. Signals in general, but the semaphore signal has always been a, a fascination of mine. I Back in 1984, I thought that was pretty cool, me the mechanical, you know, and the lighting and all that. And I decided to develop a signal, semaphore signal system. And uh, um, I studied it a little bit, compiled a lot of information and um, pictures, drawings, and so on of all, all types of different uh, signals. And um, I started to make some drawings. And what I've come up with is a component type setup where the parts are interchangeable so that you could use it on any railroad whatever whatever way you wanted to make it um, could be uh, you, you could add uh, another head or you can do whatever needed to be done for that railroad or your railroad and for your track whatever whatever how you want to do it and um, so this is the semaphore uh, of course the blades not there I have a blade right here this is the blade Take a little bit closer look at it. Here's the blade. Uh, this is just wood for now. To test it. it almost looks yellow. Uh, this is this piece here, the metal piece, is called the spectacle. Here's the back side of it. Aluminum casting, of course. And uh, I have the, the lenses. I'll show you in a moment. But this is where it goes up here. Okay, and then of course you know it'll rotate. Yeah, like about like that speed. Like that and back up and finally back up again to green clear now originally I had designed it for a motor in the base down here with a rod that ran up here quarter inch or three-eighths of an inch to a gear setup in here and then a, a 90 degree rotation to this and I was going to run it with a motor down there with a gear now the originally the original semaphores, the full-size semaphores, had a mechanism in the base that was mechanical somehow, whatever how it worked, and that's why they needed to double base for some of these. Then later in years, they did away with that, and they didn't even need to have the base at all in some cases, where the actual relay box was further away on the side of the on the right on the wayside to so the guys could come down there and maintain them and so on uh, in a different place. But um, then they put the motor. The, 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 the motor back here, gears and whatever, how it was done, it was in a little case back here. So I've decided now and I've developed uh, with the, since the 25 years that I've done this, they've come up with much smaller motors and I have a, a motor that I'm going to use for this. It's not a stepper motor. I don't think stepper motor. And what that does is gives me the uh, advantage of putting another head here that I have, you know, additional heads. They'll go make a double which I plan on doing someday and this would go like this and then I have another another here which would be the home and the distance now the point is the home that goes up here the distance signal would be the inverted fishtail which would be here and, and that would so you, that gives you an indication of the block if in front of that front of the one you're uh, going into so um, uh, then of course you have this the this is a finial for this particular type. You can use these for anything and fit on any one inch, designed to fit on a one inch aluminum pipe. This is a conduit, aluminum conduit. You can buy at the electrical store. It's a little bit out of scale. As far as the original ones were like tapered different, as they went higher, they got you know, the telescope together. But uh, you know, you gotta be practical about things, I think. And uh, the other thing, the other advantage to it is I have these little brackets. I have this one. And I have a bigger one, a longer one, I have two different sizes. Bring those up so you can see them a little bit better. Two different sizes, and then I have these little heads that go on there like that. And what that's for is if you want to make a red over red signal, you can put it on here like this. Okay. That makes a red. So that's what's called an absolute stop. And then it would have a uh, a placard here that would have it, a round placard, could be square, a lot of them are triangle, different different shapes. I decided to use round. Uh, I made up a drawing, I haven't made it yet, but it'll have an A in there for absolute, one for P, for uh, uh, permissive, means permissive signal means that if it's red, you can stop and proceed with caution till you, 
either coming across the caboose or another red signal. And uh, that's a permissive. Then I have the one for grade, which I don't know why I didn't need to tell you it's a grade. I guess if you don't, if guys run the railroad every day, they got to know there's a grade there. But anyway, that's what the three letters would be. And then, of course, I'd have another placard down here with a number on it. Down lower, it'd be a number of 120, whatever the number of that signal is. So they know, hey, number, guy reports back, hey, number 120 signals got something wrong with it. So that's how that works. And then if you wanted to, you could also put a searchlight on here too, or I guess a single. You can do it that way. You can put it out to the side like this, turn it, put it out to the side like this, three on a pole, like that. And I also have the color light, which would go do the same thing. It's designed to fit on here. It's all an inch and a quarter. It's designed to fit on there. And you can have you can have this on the front of the pole. One, one, two, three, on the side. And then, of course, you put the little finial on top of that. Where's that at? Where's my little finial? Here it is. That would go on top of the pipe, you know? Little finial. And, of course, this would go on there. And then you'd have the... So it's all, all interchangeable parts, whatever way you want to do it. Now, I have, also have the lower quadrant signals, which are cool. And here's the lower quadrant. I'll have, I didn't make a blade for this one, but uh, this is the, this will be the, uh, the uh, head for it. And then you have the old style finial like this, and it goes over the top. That's how that was designed to go. And of course, a couple of set screws to hold it. And then this would be the, um, it would be down like this. I'm doing it backwards, so it'd be like this. Okay, that'd be, uh, uh, Clear, red, then back to yellow. Okay. Now, you might notice something. I shouldn't mention it, but somebody might notice that this is backwards. The pattern maker who made this for me, he made this backwards. This is supposed to be on the other side, that rim, and it's supposed to be flush. So what I've done is I fill that in for now, and then I'll fix it later some other time. But... Um, it's all designed to be interchangeable parts, and I do have all the lenses and I, all the all the different. Uh, uh, I have a clear, I have a red, I have a green, and a yellow. Now this is the, of course, the red would be. Let's see, right there. I guess on the top because when it comes around, it would turn to red, and you can see those a little closer. Lexan plastic with a little rim. They have a little rim on there, and I planned on milling this out or grooving that out or counter boring it so that fits in there real nice and then I have a rubber o-ring that fits this exactly a, a rubber o-ring that fits this exactly and then a um, the bezel I have to make up it'll probably be either mo most likely it's going to be die cast metal I have a, my die cast machine over there cheaply made white metal works fine and uh, zinc die cast and then I have five Supposed to have five bolts. I might put six. I might put four. I don't know. Whatever I put in there, that's a bezel ring to hold that. I'll have those. And they, of course, they're used on a lot of different things in, around here. Now we also have back back to this again. I have this, which is the um, uh, colored light, three lights. And of course, this is this is the snow hood here, like this. It's the snow hood, but. You could have it without the snow hood and have the three little visors, you see. You could have that too. And um, I have the lenses for that. I have a one inch. This is a one inch. Here's the one inch right here. Okay, and that would go on here. It's a little hard to hold, but that would go on there like that. If you can see, I'll get the flashlight here. You can see that they're pretty magnifying. Magnifies pretty good. I turn the lights out, you can see them better. Uh, they're true magnification lenses. I have the, I have them in five eighths, three quarter diameter, one inch, which you just saw, an inch and a half. And on the inch and a half size, they're also clear too. They're smooth rather. And now I have a clear one, right here, that's designed to fit on here. 
and then of course whatever light you use it there uh, probably LED now and then the modern thing the LED originally I was going to put regular incandescent bulb but probably put LED in there a real bright one and uh, I don't like the white light they give but they're, they're, they're good oh by the way this is going to have a ladder that comes down here now on the ladder uh, it comes up and then it on some of them it just turned into the uh, just railing that came up like that turned into here that was fastened to the pole and then it has two brackets here that go out with some rods flat rods to stabilize the ladder so when you're climbing up it's not because these are you know these are really high up in the air because they were all different sizes but depending depending on the rail the, the terrain now on a bridge they had an interlocking some of they had three of them and they were short on the bridge then later on they took those off and put the regular lights and then eventually they put the the um, search lights and uh, semaphores were passe at that point but um, uh, that's the, the the ladder and then they also had platforms out and the scale of this would be the platform would be about that long be here and then you would come up onto the platform and then the railing part would continue up and it'd have a, a, a railing all around fastened to the pole and a railing so the guy could hold on to that and fix the whatever he had to do and uh, some guys have used those to take pictures on there uh, they're not supposed to do that, but they did. And uh, and we had the boxes. I have single box, then a double box. Two two of them bolted together, which is I'll show you the double. Get this up on the here. I'm gonna watch it. I'll hit the light. Here's the double. Let me turn it sideways so you can see it. And it's got the little clasp on there and a latch. And of course, the electronics, whatever goes in there. Now the electronics. Originally, I had electromechanical set up here, and like I said, a motor in the base with a gearbox up here, and I've scrapped that idea now, and I'm using a regular motor up here, which is not a stepper motor, and I have electronics, which I've developed. Now, they're proprietary, meaning that I developed it, and I'm not going to give it away. It took me quite a number of years to do it, and uh, I'm not an electronic guy who asked a lot of questions and made some experiments. I'm still kind of experimenting with it. I'm just about there. I'm just about there. With By April, when I get back, by the end of April, I'll have this operating and complete it. So I'm just giving you a little bit of a, um, a prelude to what it's going to be. Uh, there's so many people out there, oh, I'm making signals, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. Well, I'm doing it. Here it is. I've got it. Well, I'm working on, uh, like I said, I'm working on my bucket list, and one of those things was uh, safety valves. And, uh, uh, geez, 35 years ago I wanted to do it and never bothered with it. And I just decided that before uh, I kicked the bucket, that's what the bucket list is about, I decided I was going to do it. And uh, I've done it now in uh, two-year development. They're working great. I made 36 originals, and they're all sold. I've got one valve, 120 valve, pound valve left. Um, and uh, they're all sold, and I was going to start making a new batch, but uh, I had bought a CNC lathe to do them on, but I'm having some issues with that. I want to cover it now, but I will uh, cover the entire building and rebuilding of that machine, but um, I'm going to do them on the engine lathe over here, the next 50. So I'm having the castings made right now when I get back from Florida. Uh, we'll be working on those, and by the way, in Florida, we'll be going to... Um, uh, Largo, then we're going to go to Manatee, in Manatee we're going to go Buckingham Central and then back up to Ridge and then eventually we're going to go to uh, 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 Apex, which is North Carolina, see my buddies there. So uh, when I get back, we're going to be working on some new products from Mercer, which is going to be a gauge glass, nice gauge glass. I know, yeah, everybody's got gauge glasses. Well, I want to do it. For me, I always wanted to make a gauge glass, so I'm making it. Another bucket list thing. I've got a nice electrical switch that's used for the headlights, uh, front and rear, uh, headlight backup light, and the rear front and rear markers, and it emulates the uh, Pile National ones that were up in the cab by the engineer. Where you can uh, throw it. There's also going to be uh, eventually I'll make it so you can have it with a dimmer built in, so it'll dim the light. 
Uh, I have to work on that, but uh, I'm going to make a bunch of those up, probably about 20 of them. Uh, I've got couplers. I've got 40 pair of couplers. I'm bringing about 10, 15 pair down to Florida. Um, got some short shanks coming. They're the loop, the, the 40 pair I have, the loop shanks. Um, and uh, so we're bringing those out again. I'm also working on uh, 040 patterns here and there. Uh, anyway, that's what we've been up to. You probably won't see me now until, uh, see another video now until after I get back from Florida. Do some videos down there. And uh, we'll have those posted up probably uh, in the spring. So I appreciate all you've uh, all your comments on my videos. I enjoy making them. It's uh, a lot of fun actually for me. It's always always when the, I guess I have a Hollywood streak in me. But um, thanks again, and uh, I guess we'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.